Hello and welcome to our daily devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Adam Moline. Today we're going to continue our look at the life of King David and find how all the events are ultimately fulfilled in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, today we're going to continue by looking at the book of 2 Samuel, and we're going to start at uh, chapter 13. That's going to be the bulk of our reading, but I want to go back in time just a little bit to after Nathan confronted David about his sin. Nathan says this, Behold, thus says the Lord, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son. These are the words of Nathan the prophet to David, calling out his sin. Now, we talked about many things with this whole situation. Now we're going to begin to see how those words are later fulfilled. 2 Samuel chapter 13. Now Absalom, David's son, had a beautiful sister whose name was Tamar. That means date, the fruit date. And after a time, Amnon, David's son, loved Tamar. And Amnon was so tormented that he made himself ill because of his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin. And it seemed impossible to Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very crafty man. And he said to him, O son of the king, why are you so haggard morning after morning? Will you not tell me? Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Jonadab said to him, Lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill. And when your father comes to see you, say to him, Let my sister Tamar come and give me bread to eat and prepare the food in my sight, that I may see it and eat from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill. And when the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please let my sister Tamar come and make a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat from her hand. Then David sent home, to, sent home Tamar, saying, Go to your brother Amnon's house and prepare food for him, where he was lying down. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house where he was lying down, and she took dough and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and baked the cakes. And she took the pan and emptied it out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Send out everyone from me. So everyone went out from him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the chamber that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the cakes she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. But when she brought them near him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come, lie with me, my sister. She answered him, No, my brother, do not violate me, for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do this outrageous thing. As for me, where could I carry my shame? And as for you, you would be as one of the outrageous fools in Israel. Now, therefore, please speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. But he would not listen to her, and being stronger than she, he violated her and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her with a very great hatred, so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, Get up, go. But she said to him, No, my brother, for this wrong in sending me away is greater <clears throat> than the other that you did to me. But he would not listen to her. He called the young man who served him and said, Put this woman out of my presence and bolt the door after her. Now she was wearing a long robe with sleeves, for thus were the virgin daughters of the king dressed. 
So his servant put her out and bolted the door after her, and Tamar put ashes on her head and tore the long robe that she wore, and she laid her hand on her head and went away, crying aloud as she went. And her brother Absalom said to her, Has Amnon your brother been with you? Now hold your peace, my sister, he is your brother. Do not take this to heart." So Tamar lived, a desolate woman, in her brother Absalom's house. When King David heard of all these things, he was very angry. But Absalom spoke to Amnon, neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had violated his sister Tamar. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is just the beginning of this particular consequence from David's own sin. You'll see how David's own children, Absalom and Amnon, inherited their sin from him, just as all inherit their sin from their parents as well, all the way back to Adam and Eve. Now, if you remember when sin entered the world, the account begins with these words in the book of Genesis. Now, the serpent was more crafty than all the other creatures the Lord God had made. And what do we see here? We see Shemaiah, Jonah, or sorry, Jonadab, the son of Shemaiah, is also a very crafty man. What does that mean? It means that it's the voice of Satan speaking through this man. And what does the voice of Satan say? Take and get what you want, when you want it, now. And use lies and trickery to get it. Pretend that you're sick. Ask your sister whom you lust after to come in and take care of you while you're sick. It's that very thing, then, that Amnon does. And his sister Tamar with whom he is infatuated with lust, comes into the room, cooks food for him. Food. When Adam and Eve fell into sin, how was it that they fell into sin? Well, it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Eve saw the fruit that hung from the tree, that it was beautiful to the eye and good for food. Even though God had said there was death in that food, she took it and she ate all the same. Amnon, having listened to the voice of Satan spoken by his friend, now also takes and eats food from his sister's hand. And then he violates her against her wishes against the king's wishes. She is forcibly made his wife, at least in that conjugal sort of way. Now, dear friends in Christ, that is not the way things ought to be done, as you well know. It is sin what takes place. Sin that reflects what took place in the garden. Sin, where the true bride of Christ, the church, gave herself over to Satan. And in this case, where Tamar was taken by force to be the bride of her brother. But just as Satan hated Adam and Eve when he had deceived them, just as Satan hated the church when she had given herself to him, so too Amnon now hates his sister with a hatred greater than he ever had loved her. He sends her away in shame and sorrow. And she goes to live separated for, from him for the rest of her days. Your friends in Christ, what is going to happen is what Nathan had foretold. This will lead to additional family strife. 
Absalom will now kill his brother Amnon, just as Cain killed Abel. Death enters into David's family, and it will lead to even more gruesome, terrible deeds being done. Dear friends in Christ, this same sin infects all of us. The same sin is in our world, within our own veins, pumping through our bodies. This same sin leads to the same deadly consequences in our lives. We have loved sin. We have eaten of it. We have abandoned our true husband, Christ, and gone off after false gods. So what does our real husband do? He comes. And he does what a husband ought to do. He sacrifices himself for his bride, the church. He loves his wife, his wife, you, giving all that he has to purchase and win you, to wash you clean by his own blood, to clothe you with his righteousness, so that you may again be a part of the bride of Christ, the church, so that you may inherit all the blessings that God gives to the bride of Christ, the church, so that your shame and desolation may be taken from you as far as the east is from the west. Christ gives all that he has to make right what our sinful natures have brought into the world. And now in him we have peace, security, and love that surpasses all understanding. We have this in our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name, amen.